ゴジラ vs コングマンキー All right Kind of the good stuff. Is it good or is it bad?、Uh, it's good. It's not bad. It's entertaining. Alright. It's really entertaining. The story lacks. <laughs> I mean, the characters are fun. Fun characters, that's what I can say. They're fun. <laughs> entertaining. Characters. They weren't anything special. They didn't have m- multiple layers. <laughs> They were just entertaining. I mean, Madison's section was just the most entertaining section of the movie. That one section in the movie that I actually just laughed out loud. <laughs> Certain moments. <sighs> Just, it, it, Madison's section felt like watching an episode of The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> I mean, it was fun, it was entertaining.、Um, the Kong sections with the humans felt like they went for a more emotional route that didn't make me emotional. Didn't give me time to care for the characters because the characters didn't exist in the prior movies. So it didn't give me time to care for the characters, especially considering most of the time actually does go to the monsters. A lot of the time goes to the monsters in this movie, which is what I enjoyed. The fact that they didn't spend too much time on the humans, like in Godzilla 2014, and that they didn't. S- and that. <laughs> Well, they didn't. They, if they had evened it out a lot more, it would have been more fun because I would have had more time to relate to the characters, understand the characters, and understand their motives to a full extent. I mean, you can't have a deaf character in the movie and not, and not fully give them enough time to be a character, in my opinion. Because with. Deaf characters, you have to understand their emotions through their facial actions and what they say in sign language. You can't just look at their face and say, okay, it's a good guy or a bad guy. You know, because a lot of the time with those kinds of characters, you gotta give them layers as human beings. As Shrek once said, onions have layers and so should people. He didn't say that second part, but you know what I mean. People in movies should have layers, in my opinion. And a lot of the time in this movie, they didn't have layers. The most. I mean, the entertaining part about Madison's area was all the characters felt like their specific roles. I mean, Madison felt like the person holding everyone together. <laughs> like that one person who will lead everyone else. And also listen to what they have to say, but also just say, shut up. <laughs> I don't care what you have to say. <laughs> um, and that other guy, what's his, what's his name?、Um, the conspiracy theorist is, <laughs> is just your average one of the mill conspiracy theorists who just so happens to have a podcast and works with the people that he has a conspiracy theorist. Theory against. <laughs> Coincidence? Not really. <laughs> um, because he's been trying to go after these guys forever, and he's a conspiracy theorist, just a full on conspiracy theorist. So he s- says stuff that the guy who is full on logical, which is played by Russell from Deadpool 2, <laughs> just this logical guy who thinks logically. Does this make any sense? Why are we doing this? It, it's stupid. Why would we be going into this place <laughs> and doors hate us? I, he gets, draws that conclusion like, later on in the movie that doors hate them, <laughs> which is a fair point. Doors seem to really hate them in that movie. But especially him, at the very beginning of the movie, Madison drives off and 
guess what's in his way? A door. <laughs> it's just ironic that doors seem to hate him everywhere he goes. Um, yeah, it was a just entertaining movie. It was a blast of a movie that I feel like was enjoyable. Really, really enjoyable. I couldn't hate it, and I couldn't really love it for what it did. I mean, it brought two of the greatest movie monsters of all time together. Godzilla and Kong. <laughs> so it was bound to give some issues. For instance, I felt like King Kong got thrown a around a bit too much. Because supposedly King Kong should have a better upper body strength, but Godzilla's jaw strength seems to be enough to pick Kong up and chuck him in that movie, which should not be true. That shouldn't be happening like that. I mean, it would make sense that Godzilla could hop onto King Kong's back and bite onto him, but that makes sense. It would be a attack to try to get King Kong down. Well, technically, he's just Kong in this movie, but it would make sense. But Godzilla just yeeting got Kong across a city doesn't make any sense. They're two gigantic monsters who sh should have a limit. I mean, in Godzilla 2014, they did a great job at emphasizing the weight of these monsters by the way that they crash into the buildings, by the way that they seem to carefully predict their actions. Like, they have to think before they do it seems, in that movie. For instance, um, when Godzilla's picking up the Muto, he has to push. It seems like he has to really push the Muto just to get it off its feet and into that building. And when he's carefully predicting where the male Muto is going to go when he's trying to hit him, he has to, he, the male Muto has to swoop in multiple times for him to realize that this is how he's going to do it, and he carefully predicts where it's at. Godzilla has brains. He's intelligent. Not as intelligent as Kong, whereas he can't learn speech, but he's still intelligent. Which is where I feel like the movie kind of lacked. It made Godzilla feel more animalistic in that movie. Which is true, he is an animal, but he felt intelligent, whereas he fought battles that he knew he could win where he knew he could win them but in that that movie he really didn't have a choice of where he fought because the monsters would always be in places where he didn't want to fight which is why I, I feel like when he fought Kong he chose where he would fight him whereas he waited until he was in the ocean and far enough away from land whereas he couldn't find his way back so that he Godzilla would have the upper hand, yet, yeah. and Godzilla, spoilers, won that fight. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of things. Godzilla doesn't usually get to choose where he's going to fight, because he chooses to fight in the ocean where he belongs, where he usually fights. For instance, I feel like Godzilla King of the Monsters could have ended a lot quicker if they had just not dropped the oxygen destroy because Monster Zero or King Ghidorah does not need oxygen to survive which is why he managed to survive that but yeah they should have let Godzilla and King Ghidorah fight there because Ghidorah would have died because Ghidorah is a air monster and Godzilla is a water monster he's amphibious he would have won that fight in the water because that's his natural habitat, that's where he's lived most of his life, in the water. So if they had just let them be, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, would have been a much shorter movie. At least that's the way I see it. Um, yeah, it was, but yeah, back to Godzilla vs. Kong, it was fun, it was entertaining, it was enjoyable. To the extent that enjoyable can bring you. Because... The story did lack, and there were a few plot holes here and there. But, um, the thing that I thought was the most strange about Godzilla King of the Monsters was the fact that the Hollow Earth theory in that 
mo in those movies exists. In the MonsterVerse, the Hollow Earth theory exists. But yeah, that that was the interesting thing that I that kind of brought brought me to kind of like what the MonsterVerse did, whereas it took like actual hypotheses because Hollow Earth is not supported whatsoever. Really, they call it a theory because they give evidence that they think is evidence that every time you drill into the ground you never really find a hollow earth I mean they say that what is hollow earth and stuff like that but there's no real evidence to back it up therefore technically it's not a theory but I'll get off of that because back to the movie it was fun really fun like I can't stress this enough you should watch this movie if you have seen the other movies even if you haven't seen the other movies it's still entertaining there's more fighting in this movie than there were in Godzilla vs. Kong and Godzilla King of the Monsters and um, Godzilla 2014 combined. At least that's the way that I saw it, because there was a lot more action in this movie. A lot more monsters. I mean, Godzilla Kong is the first p person that you s first thing that you see in this movie. And second monster Godzilla does follows like five minutes after you see Kong. Destroying a flipping city. <laughs> More like 10, 15 minutes, but still. Destroying a city, okay? that That's a pretty small span with these movies because there tends to be like 30 minutes here and then 15 minutes for the monsters in those movies. But they evenly spaced it out so that there was enough time for monsters to shine at the end. They gave like tw a 20 minute long fight scene at the end. And a... <laughs> And a 15 minute long fight scene like in the middle for Godzilla and Kong to do like round round one but yeah it was it was a fun movie it was entertaining I can't say a whole lot about it because I don't want to spoil it but yeah it was it was a fun movie it was entertaining and I would suggest you watching it I give it a four out of five stars because the story and the characters did feel a bit lacking <sighs> yeah, that that's just the downside to this movie. It, the characters were really, really lacking. Okay. Well, that's the only nitpick that I have, and I can't give any more. So, yeah, I'll tell you. I told told you all the good sides. I'm pretty sure that there it was. It was funny when it wanted to be. It was serious when it wanted to be. It had its own little comedy parts, and um, God, and I feel like Kong's character was a lot more developed in this movie. I forgot to say that Kong's character he felt more like a character in this one and less like a monster, which is what they were definitely what they were obviously trying to do every time they have Kong in a movie. They try to make him feel more like human, whereas in this movie they've said it before, but he they've shown it. He, learns a little bit of sign language in this movie whereas it shows that he has the intelligence to learn sign language therefore if he had a chance to reproduce in later generations they could end up evolving into a smaller version of humans or a larger version of a human being which I think is an interesting point that this movie makes but oh yeah the plates, the spines. Oh my goodness. <laughs> mm. Half the half of the movie Godzilla has his dorsal plates lit up, the other half he doesn't. Which I'll show you real quick. This is one of the like toys for Godzilla for versus Kong for Godzilla. And as you can see does have dorsal plates that are blue. He, his dorsal plates are lit up in this. Same with this one, the battle damaged one. His dorsal plates are as well lit up. And they're translucent so you can see through them. Kind of like they're actually glowing. But yeah, they they were lit, lit up, believe it or not, through most of the movie. He uses his atomic breath a lot in this movie. 
Like in 2014, he could he had to use it sparingly because well he loses radiation. He'd lose all of the atomic energy that was inside of him, and it took him a long time to gain it back. And Godzilla King of the Monsters at the beginning he did kind of have to use it sparingly, not as much, but he did. And the end kind of just a joy ride, entertaining, fun. Whereas he didn't have to use it as sparingly. Um, in Godzilla vs. Kong, he uses it all the time. He, he it's, it's like Heisei Godzilla, the amount of times that he uses it. <laughs> Which I can say is entertaining and fun. But I feel like they should have kept it a little bit more 2019 levels. Whereas they, he didn't use it too much. He didn't use it too little, like in 2014. He used it really, really little in 2014, which I thought was cool. They, he didn't have to use it as much in 2014 because in that one, he felt more like a battle-hardened monster. In this one, that knew what he was doing and thought his actions through. In Godzilla vs. Kong, he felt the same way. In not Kong, no, King of the Monsters, he felt the same way. But in Godzilla vs. Kong... Uh, more like an animal that isn't as battle hardened and is more like just something fighting over its territory, which is technically the case in this movie, but still. Godzilla felt more like a battle hardened monster that is unstoppable when put in a stressful situation. But. And in this one, he felt more like a monster fighting for his territory. And in the other ones, he felt like a monster trying to defend himself and the world. He was he felt more concerned about the world than his own than just specifically his territory, because um, in the other in the other movies, he actually seemed to keep the destruction somewhat minimal. In this one, he's flying around, jump, ripping over, off buildings and chucking things through it. In the other ones, he did seem to somewhat care about the city and somewhat care about the inhabitants in the city. I need to fix. I looked like Alfalfa there. <laughs> Most of this video. But yeah, he, he seemed a lot more, more like an animal that uses everything in its surrounding to fight. In the other ones, he did that too, but a lot more minimally in order to prevent like damage to the environment around him. But yeah, that's all I'll really say about this movie. I don't want to get into spoilers <laughs> because the internet rages about spoilers. Hope you heard that. <laughs> well, time for me to go. See you in the next video. I know I don't do these videos too often, but um, whenever you want me to do a Godzilla video, I will do a Godzilla video. I will even do review videos because I enjoy review videos. Alright, that wraps up this video. Like, subscribe, do whatever you want. Seriously, subscribing does help my channel out pushes me to want to make more videos um but yeah i don't do videos like this too often if you want me to i will but if you don't then i won't just kidding i'll do whatever the hell i want <laughs> you don't have a say in it some days i'll do doom some days i'll do doki doki and whatever i want whatever i want i'll do like here I'll, I'll even review everything in this collection up here. I will do whatever I want. Whatever. <laughs> Alright. See you. See you. See you, everyone. Bye.